Okay, wait. <laughs> okay, I accidentally click on this sticker. I think it's really funny. Let me think. Okay, yeah. Here's back to all. Hi guys, this is June because I was born in June. Sorry for the beginning. I I actually clicked the sticker that is like sleeping, so they actually put a hat in, um, above me. So it's really funny. So today, uh, we are just going to talk about perfectionists and then why you shouldn't be the perfectionist in your life. So I was, um, okay, back forward to 12 years ago, I was always someone who seek for perfectionists. Um, person who seek for perfectionists, there's always goods and bad. So, let us talk about the goods. The goods, it means that we want to make sure everything that we are doing right. We are, we are giving our 100%. We are make sure we want to do it right and want to make sure that we get the results. I really like this attitude because it means that we per, uh, persevere. Uh, sorry, means that we are being consistent and then we also want to, want to make sure we achieve our goal. So that's the good thing about being perfectionist. However, when as I grow older, um, I find that this has been bugging me for some time. Okay, let me share with you what's the reasons because when I was being the perfectionist in my businesses last time when I was really young, uh, it was uh, like a accessory shops. When I started managing, I don't believe other people doing the work for me because I'm being perfectionist. I believe myself the most that I have problem in delegating the tasks that I shouldn't be doing. Especially when we are um, like in a solo entrepreneur, it is a very it's a very dangerous position that we'll be in because when we tend to do too many tasks ourselves because we don't believe it and we can't actually delegate to someone else uh, whom we don't know, we are actually stuck. So that's the thing that I want to talk to you guys today. So if let's say you're a first time entrepreneur or you are going to start your own business or you have been starting your business for a very long time but you feel you're stuck, you have the feeling that you can't take it anymore, you have the feeling that you can't do the admin, accounting, the IT, the sourcing anymore. This is the video you should watch. Okay, so let me introduce this, this, this book. This book um, is called The E-Myth Re Revisited. Okay, so let's check the title. Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. Uh, this is by my, uh, Michael Gerber. Okay, I hope he, I spell his name right. Okay, so this book is really cool. I read this book minimum three times. Whenever I face any business problem in terms of delegation, in terms of how I should structure my business so that I can free up my time, I will read this book. Okay, what this book is uh, about is that it's teaching a very basic concept. Okay, we as entrepreneurs, uh, whether you're solo or in a partnership or a very small team, you're always, your goal is always knowing how you should structure a business in such a systematic way that it is franchisable. Okay, let me repeat. Okay, we as a first-time entrepreneur, whether you're a solo partnership, our very first job, we should start on thinking how we can make sure our business can be franchisable. Okay, what does it mean by business can be franchisable? It means that you're actually making sure your business following a very good system so that you, yourself, can be taken out, out of your business. Why we, uh, if let's say you're entrepreneurs that you felt like you have to do everything, why you're stuck is because uh, you have not been utilized your talents in the right way. Maybe your talents is actually coaching, right? But then you realize that you have been spending time to do the administrative work, to do accounting, and then to do the scheduling work, or do the, even do the graphic designs of your company. And then you felt demotivated because you are doing the technical stuff. That's why in the whole of the business, you should think of how to systemize it. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you how exactly you are going to do it. Okay, but before that, you need to understand that in a business, there are three person. But let me tell you a story. So let's say uh, we have a entrepreneur. Um, her name is Mary. Okay, I like Mary this name, okay. So Mary likes baking, right? She likes baking cake. Uh, always so she uh, Mary was working for someone else in a bakery shop, but she has so much passion in baking up until the, oh, she has so much passion in drinking coffee up until to the point that she decided that is one day I love baking so much that 's why I decided to quit my job and then start my own business of opening a brit uh, maybe a brit shop or a coffee shop because she likes coffee and bread so much okay when she opened up her bread and coffee shop right she 'd been realizing. She's doing the she's doing the baking job. She's doing the coffee thing. This is the things that she always adore. That is what 
moved her to open up, to quit her job and open up her own shop, right? And then she realized she also needed to do like accounting, administrative, have to serve the customer, have to be the cashier, take the money from the, uh, from the customer because it's simply that she doesn't know how to delegate and then she doesn't trust people because knowing, like, knowing how to bake a cake and knowing how to operate a bread shop or a coffee shop is totally different skill set. It's totally different thing because when you're actually baking, right? You, you like baking. You, uh, you are baking the bread or you're doing, um, doing the coffee. You are doing a technical job. It's called technician. Okay, what do I mean by technical job? I don't mean by technician that you are repairing your car or your automobile. No, that's not what I'm re referring to. When I say technician, it means the doer. Doer. People who need to do the job. Meaning the executor. Okay, so this is the, the, the people that we call technician. This is the people we call technician. So after technician, we also have one level is called manager. Manager is people who make sure the technician does the work according to the system. Okay, technician can be knowing how to bake the cake very much. But then he or she might not know how to systemize the kitchen so that we can actually bake efficiently. How we should put the iron, how we should put the microwave, how our workflow should have in order to make us uh, save time and save costs. Okay, so that's the work of manager. Manager is just to make sure the day-to-day -day work is being, uh, is being uh, gone according to the workflow and according to the system so that the operation is smooth. So his task as a manager is to make sure operation is smooth. So we have the one last one, it's called entrepreneurs. So what does entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs are someone who actually have the spirit wanted to start the idea, want to have the startup. So people who have the entrepreneurial spirit, they always have a lot of different ideas, have a lot of different crazy ideas that the technician will be shocked. Okay, why do I say so? Because entrepreneurs always like to come up with crazy ideas, creative ideas where technicians need to do the job. That's why technician and entrepreneurial person always have a click. Because um, the more entrepreneurial the entrepreneur is, then the technician have to do more jo job. Okay, right now the problem is that within every one of us, whoever is in your own business right now, you have these three person in your mind. You are entrepreneur, you are a manager, and you are a technician. And that's why you are stuck. Because every day, you need to do the baking yourself and do the coffee yourself. And then you are also the manager. You have to make sure the stock, um, the, the flour or the stock is enough for you to bake the cake. You have to make sure there's enough coffee bin. You have to make sure the coffee place is clean. You are the manager. You need to make sure the day-to-day -day operation is smooth. And then you are also at the same time entrepreneur. So it means that you have a lot of crazy idea in order to increase the sale of a company. Maybe you want to throw an event with someone, with a, with a coach, so that you have a constant business flow. Maybe you want to make your coffee shop to become an event venue for a wedding. All right? The, for the entrepreneur side of you, you have a lot of different ideas. So the problem of most of us stuck because we, in ourselves, we leave three people inside. We have entrepreneurial, we have a manager, and we have technician. And most of the sole proprietor, we are, you are or we are 70% technician, 20% manager, and 10% entrepreneur. But when you first started your business, right, you always want to be entrepreneur. That's why you feel stuck. So what's the key in order to make you feel unstuck? Yeah, that's the key. How? You have to make sure you yourself, you have to make a decision for yourself. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a manager? Or are you the technician? Because this is important. If let's say you have decided you wanted to become an entrepreneur, it means that the task that you are doing right now, which is supposed to belong to technician, should be delegated out. And then you have to trust someone to do it to that. Probably inside of you, you think that, hey, but I've been doing this all the while. How can I, how can I just put the things that I always do to someone else that I don't even know? And how do I put that to other people? Because this is my core. This is my business. I carry it very much. Okay. I'm so sorry. You have no other choice. If let's say you want to feel unstuck, you just have to do delegation. Delegation is just like, um, you know, breathing, oxygen, um, you need to have practices. It's just like our muscle. So we need to exercise our muscle. We need to practice it so that it will, we will become fit. So same thing. Um, delegation is also in, is a practice and exercising. So the more you do, the better you are. But 
uh, if let's say you decided you, you are not going to do that, then you are going to be stuck in your business forever. So if let's say you haven't reached a stage, it's because maybe you are still in the infancy stage that you haven't seen a lot of volumes of sales coming in. So that's why you still can manage it and then you still like feel like uh, you can have a lot of time. But think about it. If let's say the dollar value of your hourly rate is $200, doing an administrative and accounting things can be like um, $20. Why not that getting out? Okay, so if let's say your problem is about how do you control the work of others is as good as you, then you have to think about how are, how you should actually give up your re job requirement, the job role, and also how you can actually manage and supervise your subordinates. That's more important. It can be subordinates or it can be freelancer. So if let's say you are very new to delegation, right, I will actually advise you to start delegating by hiring some some freelancers you can actually find in the groups uh, there are a lot of good people out there or there's this uh, website i've been using for the past 12 years i use this uh, website called upwork um up upwork work is working upwork.com it's very cool because in upwork itself right you can even delegate as small as data entry Data entry is not the job that you as an entrepreneur should be doing. You should delegate it out. So that's why today, uh, that's the concept I want you to understand because this can be a huge topic. I will continue to explore tomorrow. But I just want to let you understand that if let's say you are stuck, probably there are three persons living inside of you and then they are talking to each other every day. Like entrepreneurs say, hey, I got this creative idea. I want to throw a party. I want to uh, collaborate with this person and that person. The technician side of you will say, hey, but then we have so much to do. I have no enough time to do that. I have a lot of admin and accounting work need to do. I can't really have more time for clients. Okay, so two of you is called two of you inside of you, right? Is keep on like arguing with each other. That's why you are stuck. So understand this concept, and then secondly, end of the, this video, I want you to list down the top three things that um you should be focusing on your business, which is directly related to revenue producing. I want you to list down top three things that you need to do, only need yourself need to do, that will contribute to the top revenue producing task. After that, third thing I need you to do, list down three things that is totally non-income producing and it's totally you felt like a waste of your time, a waste of talent that you wish to delegate out. Okay, so that's the three tasks you need to do. And then after you've done that, so we will continue to explore for tomorrow videos what we are going to do about it and how we should start delegating so that I want you to help you to feel un uh, to actually unstuck from your business. Is that okay? Okay, so if, let's say you like the video that you're watching today, please give me some comments or shares or likes. I also have a group, um, a Facebook group of myself called Amazing Story. I'm so sorry, I haven't got time to approve a lot of people because right now, I have to do a lot of job of myself because right now we are on in, in like uh, in the lockdown. Our government just announced an extension of two weeks again. But I'm what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do the homework the same because I'm going to list down the things that I am doing but it's not income producing that I can delegate to my team. And then I'm going to do that as well. And then tomorrow I'm going to have a meeting with my team so that we're actually separate the tasks. In the, uh, to each of us so that we can actually make sure we maximize the use of our talents. Right now is not the time that we need to. Right now is actually not the time that we should waste our time. Let me tell you why. To me, it's the first time that everybody is on the same line. Why I say so? Because the poor and the rich, you also cannot go out. So it means that everybody has 24 hours. It all depends how we are going to um, Make good use of uh, how are we going to do it after how are we how, how to say that okay how are we going to grow our business right now during this very critical period it depends on what kind of activities that you do 24 7 everybody is on the equal basis right now everybody cannot go out a lot of people are suffering but what's your mindset doing to you and then how you spend your time and then how creative you are in pivoting your existing business to become a new business that can generate income to you no matter where you are is actually another skill set you should explore right now okay so i hope that this actually encourage a uh, more people about it not to being too negative about the coronavirus where we have no control let's focus on what we can control okay so please go ahead and join my group and then tomorrow i'll also continue doing my sharing and of course if let's say you like my sharing i also have a, like a, a online coaching 
So uh, my expertise, uh, depending on the problems that you face, if let's say you are facing some challenges or problem in your business right now, so probably something is wrong, but maybe you just couldn't realize what has been wrong all time because you have been stuck there for a long time. So feel free to chat with me because um, for this week right itself, I help about six to seven people to feel unstuck from their mind. Um, we actually spend about 30 minutes speaking to each other. It's over a Zoom call anyway. So after the 30 minutes, I'm so happy that I help all of them. Uh, seriously, I, I didn't expect that. I thought I can only help majority, but then I help all of them to feel unstuck. Not only that they get new ideas and also they actually know how they should actually pivot their business to suit their needs and then to reach the goal that they want. But everyone problems is different. So in order to understand your problem better, I will need to schedule a free 15 minute strategy call with you. So please don't be shy. You can either comment below or just DM me, all right? So I look forward to your message and hope everyone have a very great day. Thank you very much. Bye.